Welcome to Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to New Mexicans by State Employees Credit Union, who have been proudly serving the families of New Mexico locally and abroad since 1958. State Employees Credit Union is ready to help you and your family with all your financial goals. And now, Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. I do not have to tell you, the holidays are here. And we all wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, a happy Christmas, and of course, a great new year. And thank goodness we're going to get a new year. We're all hoping we all get a new year, right? So long, 2020. We are welcoming 2021. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the holidays and what it means to have the holidays. Well, what it means is crime goes up. Basically, crime goes up in Albuquerque, and thanks thanks be, uh, to COVID-19, crime is even worse because people are looking for other outlets. They have nothing to do, so I understand there's committing some crimes. And I'm not meaning to laugh about it because it's a very serious topic, but crime does go up. And one thing that goes up, family offenses. Why did we have those around the holidays? We don't have to have a big number of family offenses, but also fraud, homicide, Kidnapping, I'm not sure too much kidnapping, robbery, assault, car, theft, all these things happen. How can they stop? Well, that's a big topic of conversation, a uh, topic that we address a lot on this program. But what we're going to talk about today is what's going on with crime in one particular area in Albuquerque, the foothills. How does that maybe compare to other areas? We're going to talk about the community policing uh, program and how you can get involved in your district and specifically about the foothills and what's going on there. So please stay with us as we discuss the holidays, but also crime related to the holidays. We'll be back right after this. Again, happy holidays to you and your loved ones. And we are talking about crime. Not really how you can prevent it, because we do other programs about that, but you do know that things are happening. So be on the lookout and watch out for that crime in our communities during the holidays. I am so pleased to have Byron Padrell with me today. He's the co-chair of the Foothills Community Policing Council and Robert Carlton. He is another co-chair of the Foothills Community Council. Happy holidays to you and your families. Thank you for having us. Yes. Byron, I'm ready. holidays are here. Crime goes up. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, of course, every year uh, we do have an issue with crime. A, a lot of it's related to uh, our homeless problem. Uh, and the fact that we're, in a, we're living in a different time with COVID and people do not have money and jobs the way they used to. And so sometimes people will resort to uh, those measures to uh, try to get uh, ahead. And so... Uh, illegally. Illegally, ahead. yes. Illegally ahead. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the things that uh, we do with the uh, Community Policing Council is we work directly with the people and that's what's key is working with people to identify these areas so that uh, we come together as a uh, board and create policy or you know create recommendations uh, for policies for the uh, police department so that's kind of what we do what you do and, and effectively robert carlton thank yes, you again as co-chair what can you tell me about the holidays and what people should be looking out for what really goes up not just <laughs> in the foothills but across albuquerque across the state well i think as you have uh, mentioned before we started taping uh the family issues uh domestic uh violence becomes uh more acute in almost every community tensions are up people are striving for to attain some level of perfection perhaps that they might not have at other times of the year that you know the, the decorations have to be perfect the presents have to be perfect we have to find a way to to pay for everything and that's people, probably more the, <laughs> the, stra the stressor so probably not well actually i shouldn't say that i put my decorations up and i was a little stressed about it really I didn't really but, have a family offense but you're right stressors go up during the holidays yeah, because we have high expectations and, and that's a special problem for law enforcement because responding to domestic disputes is probably the most dangerous thing that a police officer has to be involved in why is that robert uh, it, because uh, of a lot of factors, uh, Byron can check me on this, but uh, uh, 
once people start going at each other and an outsider comes in and tries to get between them, it's like getting between a dog and a cat in a, you know, in a animal fight. Uh, the person that gets in between often bears the brunt oh, of the anger right. because it all gets oriented toward the, the person that's intervening. Right. So it's oh, really a dangerous time. Oh, that's an interesting dynamic, time. Byron. And, and re sometimes the officer that. will face issues from both parties. Exactly. And so when an officer walks into a situation uh, to talk to one party, then you know there's always that possibility of being attacked by the other or both. And so uh, they have to be especially careful with anything regarding uh, domestic disputes, uh, not just this time of year, but uh, any time during the year. I didn't, thank you, Robert and Byron, for pointing that out. I didn't realize the dynamic of the third party coming in because I thought, I see why is it the most dangerous for a police officer when I would think assault and robbery, armed robbery, all of these would be worse for a police officer, but the dynamic of the two, maybe it can be two against the one. Right. And sometimes children are involved in it, so the officer has to uh, think of, you know, the preservation of the children at the same time trying to de-escalate situations. So it's a little bit of work when they go out. But I've looked at, there's a crime report for each of our, what, six sessions? Six sections of the uh, community six policing. Commands, yes. Six commands and the community policing going along with that. But I do see that family offenses is large, almost the majority of a lot of the offenses. Why is that? What's going on with our families? I mean, I'm saying that's compared to, of course, forgery, commercial burglary, residential burglary. Well, that's pretty much up there. Vandalism is up there. But boy, family offenses. By well, me. think about it. If you and I were locked in a, in a house for the last eight months together, you know, okay. what we thought was harmony, you know, as a possibility of going away. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, you'll see these numbers now in different ways. They could be higher because we all argue. We're all going to argue. But some of us have it in us uh, to say, well, you know, I'm not gonna, we're not going to take it that far. But some people do go over the top. Okay. And that's when the situation uh, gets volatile. As a member, uh -huh, Robert? I was just going to say we can see some of these tensions reflected in the real estate market that people have become dissatisfied with their living arrangements and the real estate market is particularly hot right now with people wanting to relocate, get larger houses, move into the suburbs, uh, you know, change, uh, well, a lot change of them their work way of life. State moving into New Mexico, buying up our houses because they are big cities moving in. But how does that relate to just dissatisfaction because of COVID of our arrangements? It's well, the tensions that Byron was just uh, mentioning, I think. It, it is that. And then when you, when you relate it to real estate, um, not everybody at this time can buy a house. So we turn into what they call a renter's market or people who, uh, their money's not the same. And so when they cannot pay rent, problems start to arise when they can't pay the light bill. And a lot of that happens with uh, people who are in the rental market. And so that's one of the things that's happening here in Albuquerque is we've, we've gone from, uh, you know, if you're selling a house, it's awesome. But if you're renting a house, it's not the same because you don't own it. And so there's a lot more to doing the rent because uh, the person that owns that house wants that money. And right now, people are saying, I don't have the money. And that is one of the things that sparks a lot of the tension uh, that is happening in households right now. So I imagine your um, community policing council meets once a month and you're doing it now virtually, but as Byron pointed out, Robert, what other, what similar issues you're, so this is really something new this year, 2020, is the COVID and the effect and discussion in your community policing councils? Well, the, the effects of COVID and the, the precautions that we've all taken are, are quite widespread. Uh, but our council has uh, been restructured in the last year. At the beginning of the year, uh, we lost uh, essentially the old members of the council and uh, uh, and I, I happen to end up being the, the last person standing. Uh, so we have 
uh, been restructuring, and we have a committee that's been working uh, called the Singing Arrow Committee uh, that started out with just one or two ideas of problem areas in the Singing Arrow neighborhood, which is next to Four Hills mm -hmm. and south of Central. Uh, and it's blossomed into like 18 uh, different issues, uh, not all of them directly police issues, but now those are expanded to the Manzano Mesa area, the Piedra Lisa trailhead, and there are citywide implications for uh, policing needs and community safety needs. And uh, what what are you since you've been on the council for a long time, Robert? What are you seeing that's different this year? The the struggles that the police department have been going through as they try to adapt to the change from the old way of doing things to a constitutional policing uh, model and a community policing model has been wrenching and very difficult for, uh, for the uh, officers that have been around for a while to adapt to. Is so, that because of the, the, what is it, the Justice Department's from, evaluation? From is the that? Cost, for the CASA pro program. Okay, the, uh, that's. The uh, uh, court approved settlement agreement from 2014 uh, that has been ongoing. There have been a lot of articles in the paper. Even recently, recently stating even, that the policing policing, the policing, the police aren't policing themselves. That was what the it, moderator no, that, just recently said but exactly. um so you've seen that as an impact because of the morale of the police officers or what it's a different way of work it requires a, a rather different approach uh, from being the old model was uh, i'm gonna say a word that i've never never used uh, with Byron present, but it was like they were hyper aggressive in the past. Yes. And now with this model, they have to be assertive and more community oriented. And that's a, a vast change. It's very difficult. Well, a needed change, a necessary change. Well, I think Byron and I would agree well, I mean, the, the, the courts are requiring that change. So it's yeah, not yeah, me yeah. as a host of this yeah. program saying that, but that's what's come yes, out of the cost yes. of the agreement is that they're going to change. Byron? Yeah, so, and the police are doing that. And, and, and it's going to be a process. They thought it would just take just a few years. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. But as the uh, department begins to grow, which it is doing now, uh, the officers are receiving a different type of training that allows them to be able to deal with it. Well, you did say that they're changing but i just read the article recently um that was in the papers in november stating that early november saying that the court monitor blasted apd for not policing its police so you see as a member of the community policing council the community policing council that they are but the court monitor mo yeah monitor said they are not the, the monitor is privy to some things that we're not, uh, unfortunately. Um, and, and the police have been, if you've noticed, uh, there's been some changes in the department. And those were some needed changes uh, so that they could move forward. Uh, now notice, the interim police off, uh, chief is Harold Medina, and he said he wants to work with the community outreach and um, be in compliance updates and things like that so that's what you're referring to the yes. community outreach I found at this time I think that uh, uh, interim chief Medina has been very active uh, with us and uh, more so than in the past we have been able to reach him directly whereas you know you'd have to go through a chain of people to try to get to the uh, chief but he wants to get this problem taken care of and so we're eager to, to work as a council to work with the community because what have you you said you were able to reach the uh interim police chief harold medina 
directly. What types of things have you wanted to reach them about? Well, you know, we have questions. We have questions uh, in regards to certain things. You know, if we cannot, uh, generally, our chain would be to go to the commander in the area. And we do that in our meetings, our monthly meetings, uh, during the course of the month. If um, one just happens to be not be there, and we need to, we need to, we have a question we want to ask. Uh, the department is now uh, is a lot of, a lot more open to us uh, than it has been, and that's part of that change of guard. What people need to understand about the uh, policing council is that in the beginning we were brought in to uh, bridge the gap between the community and the police. And people say, well, how big was the gap? Well, let's, I can tell you that you could drive through the gap. It was that big. <laughs> and it didn't matter what part of society that you came from, whether you were wealthy or whether you was poor, everybody did not like the police for one reason or the other. Well, that's a broad statement to say everybody. Some hmm. people appreciated and liked the police. They do. They do. Okay. But everybody has, at some point, they had an issue. So maybe yeah. you didn't oh. come in my neighborhood fast enough, or you snatched me up and I'm not the one. You know, so it, you know it varies. It, it, okay. it varies vastly between uh, those who have and those who don't. So the community po the community uh, council was to bridge the gap between. Yes, and at the same time, working with the community, uh, we were able to uh, see other issues that maybe. Uh, people don't want to go to the police. And if I call the cops, they're not going to show up. But with the council, people, can, it's easy for them to talk to us, and it's even e easier for us to talk to them so that we can take their voice back. Do people know to talk to you, Byron? Do they know about the community policing councils? And how do they know about it? We've been grateful to this program to be introduced, our audience to it. But truly, prior to me being introduced to the community uh, policing councils on my show, I never <laughs> knew about them. You didn't know we existed. Well, well not really. I, I mean, possibly, but... I, I will tell you that we're working on that. Um, uh, being in media myself, uh, one of the things I always bring up is that we, uh, the folks in Albuquerque aren't getting educated good enough and that the, uh, the city and the police department need to do more education. Uh, and right now, educating people is more online uh, because of COVID, more television, oh, yeah. more radio, uh, more uh, yeah. even in the newspaper, more ways to get this information out. But the people who've known, and I'm going to ask you, Robert, you the same mm -hmm. question, but Byron, when people who knew about you contacted you rather than the police, what would they t contact you about? Oh, they would contact you directly about things that they, could we could we solve the problem ourselves? No. Uh, but we could take that back to the board for recommendations. Well, give me, Robert, give me some examples of the people who knew about you. What well, would they contact the community po policing council over contacting the police directly? Okay. Lady uh, sent me an email. She said, I am mad enough to spit nails. Uh, the parking lot, the public parking lot, uh, is supposed to be closed every night at 9 o'clock. It's never closed. There are wild parties at night. There's gunfire. There's uh, drug and alcohol transactions. What parking lot are we talking about? Uh, Piedra Lisa Trailhead. Oh, at the, oh, at the so, east okay. end of, of well, Manal. Well, I hear gunfire. Um, okay. And it's a, it's a, it's what I would have that I grew up considering a very nice neighborhood. Yes. And but. So the, they came to us. We put it in with our committee that's working on similar issues in the uh, Singing Arrow uh, Park area. And Manzano Mesa has similar problems. So we have been working with them. Uh, we've met with both lieutenants from the Foothills Command, both in the field and online. and the lieutenants have a positive uh, orientation toward community policing. They have ideas, they have programs, they have activities, and they're going to be featured tonight on our webinar uh, to talk about the community policing and 
the initiatives that they're working so on. So in this particular case of a parking lot should have been closed, but they're shooting and partying, I imagine people have called the 911 to report this as well, Byron. And you can, you know, you can call 911, but there's priorities, unfortunately. Uh, okay. It might not be the highest on the so priority So another, list. come up with some other examples of when people reach out to you to the community policing council compared to the police? Um, I think we can also mention that uh, area around Singing Arrow where the uh, buses, uh, the buses turn around at Tramway and Central and it is the last turnaround for all the buses and so that's where a lot of the homeless get off. Uh, the area, some parts of it is poorly lit and cars really come through kind of fast and you cannot see people. I think we've had, I believe it was last year, maybe the year before, somebody was struck uh, exiting after exiting a bus. So uh, they want to get these things addressed in their neighborhoods because it's unsafe, especially with the fact that they're building a community center in that area and it's kind of dark, you know. So until that happens or until it's lit, well lit in that area, it, it becomes dangerous. So they've contacted their Foothills Community Policing Council? Yes. And what are you able to do about it? We're able to talk to uh, the command there who will in turn speak with uh, parts of the city, the maintenance, such as, you know, what is it going to take to get more lighting in the area? Um, if that part of the area is not in the city and we have to uh, work with the state on some things, you know, we're able to do those things as well. Do you have another example, Byron? Or excuse me, Robert? Um, certainly. Uh, Good, uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are lots of uh, potential examples. I was gonna pick up on what Byron mentioned uh, about the lighting there. Uh, Winona is a street that runs from Tramway down to Dorado, uh, just south of Central. It's the first street south of Central. It's got, if, if it doesn't have a thousand apartments uh, uh. along that street, uh, I don't know how many it has, but it's a lot. For a more for a half mile stretch, there are three street lights, and it's a it's a stretch that has a, a lot of pedestrian traffic, right. uh, or and should have even more. But there are only three street lights. Ah, okay. And and so these are these are public safety. These are quality of life issues. These are things that are not just police issues. They, but they all have a, a law enforcement component or a public safety component. And uh, so we are able to make a recommendation and our Community Policing Council is gonna be making a number of important recommendations within the next month. And each of those has to be responded to by all of the affected municipal authorities, including the police. Byron, thank you for that, Robert. Um, what, would you, what would you like the public to know about the Community P Policing Council? Um, the, the council is made up of people of all walks of life, and, and it's great for it to stay that, that way uh, because it gives a better perspective on what's going on, uh, the pulse of that, what the community uh, is. And um, you can go to the city's website under the police department and look up Community Policing Council. Uh, and I believe, uh, Bob, I'm not sure if there's a link for the evening's uh, events so that uh, mm -hmm. the, the community can um, join the Zoom. Um, and it's great because we've watched the numbers go up. We only, we started with maybe 20. Sometimes we have as high as 80 or 90 people wow. that will stick around. And so the word is, in a sense, is getting out, uh, but we can do better. We can do better. And with all these uh, commands around the city, um, we all we can get things straight without playing. How do you, what's that uh, game at the fair where you you hit the one and the next one pops up? <laughs> whack them all. So we're gonna be, we, we, we'll all be able whack to whack. Them all. Yes, okay. we'll all be able to whack them at the same time. Robert, <laughs> thank you, Byron. Robert, what would you like the public to know about the community policing? Council? Well, I would like to the public to know that the Foothills Policing Council. Uh, has really energized and excited me uh, that we are doing things in the foothills that we were told can't be done. Uh, Such we as? Have, 
we have an incredibly diverse council of volunteers. We're not paid. None of us is uh, paid. We're all volunteers. But we were told, oh, you can't recruit young people because they have no interest whatsoever in in public service and in voluntary things. We've got one uh, member of the council, Andre, uh, is uh, in his early 20s. And he actually grew up in the Foothills Command area and w has gone to school. And he's chosen to continue to make his life here. We've got another one in his 20s, another in his early 30s. Uh, we've got uh, just an incredible diversity of people who are have powerful experience and lots of ability uh, to get some hope to give some hope for our communities and and That's what yeah it like. and and it's it's really this is a thousand years ago when I was a freshman in college <laughs> <laughs> and okay. we we said politics is the development and resolution of public issues this That's is what it. you're doing. Very good. Robert Carlton, thank you so much for being part of this program for your public service for the Foothills Community uh, Policing Council. And Byron Padrell, thank you as thank well you. for your community service and for working as the co-chair of the Foothills Community Policing Council. We appreciate it, and it's good news for all of us that we have these across the city. But we appreciate you coming in, sharing a little bit about the hope for uh, the foothills. So thank you for that. Right. And happy holidays again to you and your family. <laughs> thank uh, you. Thanks for watching the show. I'm Diane Kinderwater. Make it a great week with your family. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater is presented as a public service to New Mexicans by State Employees Credit Union, which has proudly been serving the families in New Mexico locally and abroad since 1958. State Employees Credit Union is ready to help you and your family with all your financial goals and is the exclusive sponsor of Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater in order to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a DVD copy of any any issues and answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.org or call us at 505-345-1991.